Hey guys, my name is Ashley, and today I wanna to share some tips and tricks for photographing the Northern Lights. I have been lucky enough to see the Northern Lights twice in my life. The first time was in 2019 in Iceland. I was on a 10 day road trip and I saw them five nights in a row. And the second time was just recently. I was on a cruise up to Canada and as we were leaving the New Finland area, we saw them one night while at sea. So it's become a little bit of a passion of mine to find them and photograph them. And I think I've kind of, I'm not gonna say mastered, but I've gotten some really good photos out of those experiences. And I want to share with you some of my tips and tricks to help you while you're out in the field. So before we jump into it, the first thing I'd recommend is downloading the Aurora app. Now this app I've been using since Iceland and it's a good tool for predicting where the Northern Lights might be happening in the world. It will also use your location on your phone to tell you if you're standing in an area that has a high likelihood of seeing the Northern Lights. So when I was in Iceland, it told me a couple nights that I had a 20% chance of seeing them. Even though it was a low percentage, I still was able to see them those nights and they were very bright and they lasted a long time. So even though it was a low percentage, it was a percentage and I did see them. So it's a great app for figuring out those predictions. Once you've got your location picked out and you feel like you have a good chance of seeing the Northern Lights, of course you wanna make sure that it is a clear sky where you're standing and not so cloudy. Um, and then you wanna follow these seven principles that I have found worked very well. Tip number one is to eliminate the light pollution. These are photographs from Iceland and you can see that I have a house light, a street light, and those are all blocking the view of the Northern Lights that are happening behind them because there's so much light hitting the lens that I'm not seeing what's happening up in the sky. So you wanna eliminate all of the light pollution possible. In this case, maybe I would walk around the house to get a better view out in the open of the dark night sky. Or if the lights were happening all around, I would face the camera the opposite way so there wasn't any light immediately hitting the lens. Tip number two is to use your widest lens. So you wanna look at the focal length of each of your lenses, and that's indicated by the millimeter reading on the front of your lenses. So the lower the number, the wider the lens. In this instance, I have a 16 millimeter lens on my camera, and I've got a pretty good shot here, but when I switch to the 11 millimeter lens, you can see how much it opens up and how much wider it is. So I find this to be really helpful when trying to capture as much of the night sky as possible. Tip number three is to keep your camera on a tripod. You want your camera as locked down as possible for any astrophotography, night sky photography, northern lights photography. You wanna make sure your camera does not move. And that's because we keep the shutter open a little bit longer than normal photographs and any shake in the camera will cause a blur. So you wanna make sure you have your camera on a tripod and that tripod is not moving anywhere. If it's windy, you wanna weigh that down with some bags um, and just make it as stable as possible. Of course, if you try and shoot handheld like I did on this night, you might get a couple of blurry photographs. Tip number four is all about where to focus. And this took me a lot of trial and error to figure out, but I think the key is to have something in the foreground to focus on. You wanna set your camera to a manual focus and get something in the foreground that you can use as your pinpoint. So in this situation, I had some well-lit trees. I focused on those and that allowed everything else behind those trees to be crisp. So the night sky, the Northern lights, etc. In this next photograph, I have some mountains in the distance. Those are all dark, but what I did was I lit something nearby, maybe a little bush or a tree. I lit it with a light quickly, did a manual focus, and then allowed my camera to photograph with that point of reference, and then that made sure everything else was crisp behind that. Next couple of photographs, I have some brush in the foreground. Those were my points of reference. And then when you don't have a point of reference, you may get some blurry photographs like this. So in this case, I was out in an open field, no point of reference, and I did not have a lens that went to infinity. You may have one of those, and that could work in this scenario, but if you don't have one of those, it's really not gonna show much except for a couple of blurry photographs. Tip number five is to adjust your aperture. And aperture is essentially how much light is being let into your camera. And you can think about it like your own eyes. So if you lower your eyelids, less light is being let into your eyes. If you widen your eyelids, you're getting a lot more light in there. And that's essentially how a lens of a camera works. The aperture is noted by an f-stop number. So you'll see something like f4, f5, f1.4, f... 22, those are all aperture numbers. The lower the number, the wider open it is. 
So when you're doing night sky photography, you want a lower number. So look at your lenses and see what the lowest number possible is, and that is what you should aim to use. In this example, you can see I had a lens with an f4 aperture, and then I changed it to f5, which was essentially constricting the amount of light that went in. So the first photo is brighter because it's a wider aperture, and then the second photo is a little darker because I constricted the light that was moving into the lens. Tip number six is to adjust your shutter speed. So similar to how we just discussed aperture with how much light we're letting in, the shutter speed is really how long you are letting that light in for. So on night sky photography shoots, you wanna keep your shutter open for at least a couple of seconds to capture as much light as possible because the skies are typically so dark. Now, the length of time really depends on what it is you're trying to compose in your shot. Do you want a lot of blur to show the full movement of the northern lights, or do you want more crisp photographs? For me, I like to make sure the stars are crisp in my photos, but show a little bit of the wave of the northern lights themselves. So I'll have a shutter speed from maybe three seconds to up to 15 seconds. You also wanna note that the earth is rotating. So if you keep your shutter open for let's say a minute, you will get those star trails because the earth is spinning. Maybe that is something that you want. That is a look and some people aim to have that type of photography. Again, for me, I like crisp star shots with a little bit of movement in the northern lights themselves. So I tend to go anywhere from three seconds up to 15 seconds and that's pretty much my max. You can see in these examples, I went from four seconds to eight seconds. And then note, I adjusted my f-stop here, so I constricted the light, uh, but I started at eight seconds, then I went to 15 seconds. So you can see the differences between those photographs. Tip number seven is to adjust your ISO. And this is always at the bottom of my list because it refers to the sensitivity of your camera to light. Um, so it is a digital enhancement and essentially it can make your images brighter, but the brighter you pump it with your ISO, the more grainy your images can become. So I always try to avoid that and I try and leave my ISO as low as possible. Um, usually I aim to keep it under 1600, but occasionally, especially while shooting the Northern Lights, it has to be a little bit higher than that. But I just try not to go too high if I can avoid it. So you'll see in these pictures, I went from 1000 to 1600. And then this next group, I went from 800 to 1000. So it does bump up the brightness, but you just wanna be careful that you're not going over the top where your photos will become grainy. One question that comes up all the time is, are the Northern Lights as bright as they appear in the photographs? And there's no one blanket answer for this. Some nights I've seen them, they last a couple of minutes and they're pretty dull. Other nights they last five or six hours and they are incredibly bright to the eye. Of course, the camera can brighten it up and of course post-production can brighten it up. Although I personally don't like to do a lot of post-production, I like to try and capture what I'm seeing in the camera as is with minimal editing afterwards, if any at, at all. So there is no one size fits all when it comes to Northern Lights photography. And honestly, that's what makes it pretty exciting, at least to me. And if you're watching this video, I'm sure it does to you as well. So hopefully these tips are able to set you up for success. In short, bring your patience, bring a tripod. If you really had to pick a lens, maybe an 11 millimeter lens that goes down to a 1.8 or 2.8 f-stop, um, if you are looking to rent a lens or try out new lenses, I always go with borrowlenses.com. This is not sponsored at all, but pretty much before every trip that I go on, I rent a lens just to test it out if I know what I'm hoping to shoot. And I've always loved the products that I get from them, reasonably priced, and uh, hopefully it can help some of you guys in the future. So thank you so much for watching. Please send me your photographs when you're out in the field. I'd love to see what you guys come back with. And uh, until next time, thanks so much for watching.